So as you could probably tell by the title of this video, this is going to be something completely different from everything that I've posted so far. Um, and I have to be honest, there is a part of me that's kind of reluctant to release a video like this. I'm scared that people will take it the wrong way, that people will sort of think that I'm crazy or think that I'm madman. And to be honest, that is kind of justified. I'm also afraid that people won't take me seriously. But I've come to realize that that doesn't necessarily matter because it's more important for me to put the ideas out there so that other people can attempt to take them further. But this thing that I want to discuss, um, it's been something that's been on my mind for four years and it's occupied my mind for four years and only recently have I started to think about it again and think about uh, the fact that I wanted to present these ideas. And I ultimately realized that it's more important for me to put these ideas out there and discuss what I have to say, um, even if it's wrong, even if it sounds crazy at first, if only for the reason that I'll be dead anyways in a hundred years, nobody will notice. <laughs> so if you're wondering what this is all about, um, I need to tell you the story of my first book, um, which is on the topic of DMT. Like, yes, the, the Joe Rogan DMT. It sucks now that it's kind of a meme, but you know, <laughs> back then it wasn't such a meme. So when I was in second year university, I was in a state of feeling pretty much adrift. Uh, like I felt completely purposeless and nothing in life seemed to kind of spark that feeling of curiosity um, and awe for like existence, which, you know, which I experienced a lot during my childhood. And it was around this time that my interest in the human mind and the subjective experience of an individual person began to increase significantly because for me i viewed the mind as kind of the great unknown frontier we still don't really know what consciousness is we have no idea what the subjective experience is and yet all of us you know experience our world subjectively and it's the first thing we experience we like we infer the existence of the actual world from our subjective experience from it of it so that means that fundamentally we ex our consciousness is first our subjective experience is first and then you know we infer the existence of a world afterwards and yet we still don't know what this first thing is now this whole fascination with the mind really resulted from the first time that i tried weed in university um and it was not a pleasant experience i didn't even take that much and yet the whole time i thought that i was experiencing like a different plane of reality and it completely opened my mind you know it freaked me out when it happened but afterwards i reflected on it and i thought like wow like how is it possible that you can change the mind to such a degree that it feels like you're in a different universe and so i began to like think about other states of mind like and I began to think about things like schizophrenia do, schizoph do schizophrenic people experience the world in a completely different way and of course be eventually i became interested in psychedelics not necessarily taking them because i was still kind of afraid from the weed experience but more or less kind of what people experience um with these drugs and how it kind of changes their perception and what that can tell us about the mind. And so at this point, I began researching psychedelics intensely. Um, and I was particularly interested in just listening to people ex like, explain what it felt like for them. You know, like, again, I, ha I have a problem with the sort of scientific quantifiable method um, in that it leaves out a huge part of existence, which is subjective experience itself. I think it's really important to just listen to people and listen to how they feel about things rather than, you know, always trying to seek the objective truth, which everybody agrees upon. You know, obviously that's important, but I really do value subjective experiences. But I was opened up to a world of incredible fascination and you know the way people would describe their experience for example they would perceive time differently as either sped up or slowed down or as if there was no time at all things like being able to recognize patterns more easily and being able to see details which their mind normally filters out is these kinds of things which really made me interested in psychedelics because they seem to kind of point to the capabilities of the mind and how it can be shifted and you know the extent to which we really don't understand what the mind is so one of the resources which i came to over and over again to sort of kind of seek um, these subjective experiences with people were having was the YouTube channel known as Psyched Substance. It's still on YouTube right now. It's very popular. Um, and it's an amazing YouTube channel. And Adam, who's the host of this channel, has a lot of videos explaining subjectively what these drugs feel like. For example, he has one on LSD and that one really opened my mind to sort of what LSD could do for somebody and how it could change their state of mind and cause them to perceive reality in a completely different way. And so all of his videos I found extremely fascinating. But as I watched more and more of these videos, I came across a couple 
which were on the topic of the drug DMT. And I believe some of these videos have been have since been deleted because, you know, it's very controversial to post this kind of content on YouTube. But at the same time, I think I think he has reposted um, descriptions of these experiences so you can see them for yourself. But he describes DMT as the most powerful psychedelic he's ever tried and purported, purportedly the most powerful psychedelic uh, known to mankind. But right away from the way he, Adam described his experience, I could tell something was different. There was something different from just seeing seeing pretty colors or seeing, you know, your environment change and the walls breathe or whatever. Something was very, very different about DMT with respect to other psychedelic drugs. So what he describes is something he just calls a, a DMT breakthrough, uh, which has since become kind of a common term when discussing DMT, which is when a certain quantity of DMT is smoked, reportedly three hits, um, a person will become unconscious and what they can, ex when what they experience as a result of being knocked unconscious can only be described as profound. So profound that when I first heard of this experience, I was in disbelief. And then as I began to look more and more into it and hear these other people's experiences and more or less corroborate the kind of crazy things Adam was saying, I, it began, began, I began to ponder the possibility that something else completely different was happening with this drug. You know, you you couldn't just say somebody was merely hallucinating. I began to genuinely believe that something else, something that I necessarily don't want to, you know, give away right away, but something extremely profound and extremely upsetting <laughs> is happening. I don't know even know the word to describe it. It's upsetting because it it's kind of, you know, you didn't want this to be true in a sense, but here we are. And as I, you know, as I began to ponder the possibilities, uh, it, it sort of, it, it, this kind of exploration began to reveal a lot of things for me. For example, I began to ponder the nature of consciousness and the nature of free will and realize, I, and I began to theorize about what consciousness actually is and what this universe actually is. You know, things like that, which, you know, you're not necessarily supposed to have the answer to. You know, what's the purpose of life? I felt like, wait a second, is there actually a literal purpose to life? Because, you know, if you ask somebody, what's the purpose of life? It's like an abstract question it seems to have multiple answers but what what's implied by dmt seems to be that there is a literal purpose to life like this ex this universe has some kind of a function now of course that's probably hard for you to <laughs> to understand why that's the case especially just from me saying that a drug reveals this and so i became obsessed with dmt to the point where i began writing a book about this um, as I said in second year university and for a, pretty much a year this book occupied all of my time like I would <laughs> I would not go see friends because I was busy writing the book and stuff and so I spent a huge amount of time researching editing and you know writing everything and composing the whole book and the more I wrote the more the picture began to reveal itself and the more I kind of speculated on the nature of things and the nature of DMT um, and what was really going on and how that can kind of reveal other aspects of life and kind of illuminate things which are otherwise very mysterious. And the theories that I postulated in this book are a bit crazy and are a bit outlandish. But I say in the book itself that even if these are crazy, and if, even if that, if, even if I, if it turns out that I'm wrong, they do kind of open the window to other questions which can be answered by this. Um, and if for nothing else, this is something which could, should spark curiosity because the experience is so bizarre and so contrary to what you think the mind is capable of that it should inspire a great deal of scientific inquiry which is currently not receiving which i find completely crazy like how is it possible that the mind can have an experience like this and yet nobody seems to be exploring it rigorously it, it just seems absurd to me and so even if the theories i you know speculate about ended up being wrong it would make it clear that there was something at least worth investigating here um, and kind of my theories could be a jumping point for exploration. And so we will definitely learn something. However, even though I finished the book and I was really proud of the fact that I'd finished this book, that was like a big thing for me, especially with ADHD, it seems like really hard to focus on any one thing, but I was able to get this thing done. Um, I, I realized that in its current state, it's a bit too crazy and too unbelievable for people to be, for it to be taken seriously. And also it seemed way too speculative. Like that's one of the big problems with the book is that it's just like, well, this is a possibility and this is a possibility, but there's no concrete answers. Um, and I never really took the time to get the concrete answers, um, largely because that would entail me actually taking DMT. And as the, you know, the more I explored this, the more that seemed like, yeah, I would never do that because it's just, it's just too scary. Although I'm, con you know, I'm considering it, but like it currently the experience does te seem way too scary for me to actually engage in. And so, you know, to this day, I haven't published the book and I have only spoken to a few people about it. And, you know, you guys didn't know about it until just now. But I've reached a point three years later where I do want to discuss everything in this book. And of course, it's not related uh, heavily to the things which I discuss on the channel. You know, it's obviously related to the mind and 
Uh, I bring up Jung a couple times in the book, although not very extensively. But regardless, uh, I do want to discuss what I have to say in this book because I think even you know even if it turns out that I'm wrong, uh, you will learn more from it and you will always consider possibilities, which could help reveal kind of the truth about things, even if the even if what I you know theorize about is ultimately wrong. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this kind of this series of videos which I'll be making and I hope to publish like one per day or maybe one every other day is going to be completely unrelated from every to everything else that I've you know sp spoken about on the channel. And for some of you that might be refreshing and some of you might be really engaged by what I have to say, but I can imagine for others uh, this is not what you signed up for and you may check out. And you know that's completely understandable. Um, and there's a point in this discussion which I'm going to be having um, which I expect to lose about half of you, where I say something so absurd that half of you are just like, okay, this is crazy, I'm, I'm out. And, and, you know, to an extent, I completely understand that. But what I want to say is that I promise to anybody who's listening to this, you will, even if you don't necessarily believe me, you will be intrigued. And, you know, there are probably some of you that know exactly where I'm going with this. Some of you will probably Google DMT for yourself and be able to find pretty much everything which led me to kind of writing the book that I, that I wrote. Um, and so you could do this all on your own, um, and there's nothing to stop you from doing so. So you can do that if you want, but I, I will be discussing like a huge number of kind of DMT experiences um, and what I believe they imply um, later down the line. And, the, and well, unlike my other videos, these should come out relatively quickly, so you will get the answer. Um, but there's also a massive warning which I need to give, a couple massive warnings. First of all, these things are dangerous. You know, I am... Um, more or less in the pro psychedelic camp, I think they can be very, very beneficial, and the fact that they were illegal is completely absurd. Um, on the other hand, they can be very, very dangerous psychologically. You know, the physical dangers with psychedelics are, you know, they're pretty well established that they're they're not super uh, physically dangerous, except for certain types, such as um, ibogaine. Um, but psychologically, they can be very damaging, and this the psychological risk I think people need to take seriously. And if you're, you know, if you're going to engage with psychedelics. Um, you need to be able to understand what you're getting into and understand kind of what to do in case things go wrong. Another warning about this whole thing is that the the implications of which I speak about are so earth shattering that they have the potential be, to be dangerous. Um, and I don't want to discuss what this danger is necessarily until I get there, um, which is why I actually encourage you not to take me too seriously and take this kind of with a grain of salt because, you know, if I'm right, there are kind of dangers involved. And that's all I'll say about that. You'll, you'll understand what I'm saying as it gets there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that serves as a decent enough introduction to my unpublished book, which will be published in video form, I guess. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, well, essentially this series will just be me discussing each chapter um, of the book. Uh, some chapters might take a video or two, um, and I may even add additional things as well as do kind of Q and A's about this because I imagine all of you would have a lot of questions and a lot of kind of like, a lot of good questions that need to be answered because you know, th this is kind of crazy <laughs> and this is kind of absurd, I have to admit. Uh, but thank you for watching. Hopefully you're intrigued and hopefully you will be with me for this journey and watch subsequent videos. Um, and hopefully even some of you might not, might think that I'm not too crazy and that I have something legitimate to say. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.